Hi, my name is Glenn Hampson. I'm the Executive Director of the Science Communication Institute and the Program Director for the Open Scholarship Initiative, or OSI. When I'm not running OSI and SCI, I'm out here on the baseball field, uh, coaching. And uh, that's why I'm out here today. I want to show you some of the similarities between what we're doing and the game of baseball. So hopefully this makes sense. So baseball played on a field like this. And uh, it's not really, it's a different game for different levels. So uh, when the kids are small, these bases are a lot closer together. When, as they grow older, they get farther apart. Uh, you'll notice that this field is a turf field, but oftentimes it's a grass field with, with dirt infield. Uh, the kids pitch from a mound that's 60 feet away when they're old, but when they're younger, uh, the mound is much closer, and there isn't a mound, in fact. Uh, the bats vary from big, fancy, expensive metal bats to, well, when you start off, you use a little bat like this. Uh, the baseballs are, are different. They can be soft balls like this, or little tiny balls like this when you start, little wiffle balls. And then as you get older, the balls get standardized and they're leather coated, all the same diameter and the same weight. There are lots of different variations in the rules as well. Um, when, the, when the kids are, are little, uh, you can't lead off a base, you can't steal, but as they get older, there's, there's a very complex set of rules that comes into play and they're all codified in a, in a, in a rule book, uh, hundreds of pages long many years in, in the making. So, when you see these different kinds of ball games going on, uh, they're all baseball. Uh, it could be t-ball, it could be major league baseball, but they're all baseball. And they all have in common uh, the certain elements of hitting the ball, running, uh, throwing the ball, catching, and, and the common rules. So, uh, what does this have to do with OSI? In, uh, in OSI, we've talked at length about the meaning of open. And there are many people who uh, complain that open isn't well-defined and that that's a problem. Uh, in OSI, we've conceded the fact that, that open isn't well-defined and, in fact, that it exists on a spectrum of outcomes. Uh, yeah, and we've identified five components of those outcomes how discoverable it is, uh, how accessible it is, how reusable it is, how transparent it is, and then how sustainable it is. We call that the DARTS open spectrum. And open exists along that, along that spectrum. Uh, open outcomes can be open access, uh, the way that it's defined sometimes, which is uh, CCBY licensed and uh, immediate and put in the right kind of format, in the right kind of repository, and so on. Uh, or it can be uh, public access, uh, something that exists on PubMed Central, where maybe something is, uh, the copyright is not held by the author, and it's embargoed, um, and there's no reuse permission, and, and so on. Uh, but it's free to access. So uh, there are certain common elements throughout all kinds of open, whether it's bronze, or gold, or green, or public, or open, or, uh, or whatnot. And uh, the, the common denominator is that people can, can get at this information uh, and can, can read it. And uh, it's all baseball. So our lesson that we've learned from all that is uh, to embrace that open spectrum and to appreciate that it is, is all part of uh, uh, what we should be striving toward with open. So I put together a lineup here toward the camera. This is our lineup for open. Cameraman, you got it? All right, batting first. Do good research. Batting second. Make it open on the darts spectrum. So anything is, anything is good, any kind of open. Number three, do your outreach and share your research. Batting fourth, encourage your colleagues to also do open. Batting fifth, what else can you do? Can you make your data open? Can you make your protocols open? Batting sixth, do something with all this. 
it's not open. Open isn't the end of the story, it's just the beginning. And then building off of that, batting seven, eight, nine, discover something with open. Find information, find connections that you didn't know about before. Uh, standardize your data. This is uh, more of a field-wide endeavor, but figure out how to make things even more comparable than they are before. And then batting ninth, uh, compare between disciplines and between fields. Work on the interdisciplinary potential of open. And then sub subbing in for number one, uh, do better research the next time around. Do even, even more open research the second time around. And number three, do even better outreach and better sharing. The keys to the game, darts. Embrace the entire open spectrum. And a key to this will be these six through nine hitters. What we do with open, are we building? Are we discovering? Are we standardizing? Are we creating more interdisciplinary connections uh, with open? And when we do that, we can flip the incentives in open so that it becomes something that people want to do instead of something that they feel they need to do. And as I walk back into the camera frame, thanks for bearing with me. hope this analogy wasn't too tortured, but um, it, it really uh, goes to show, I think, that, uh, that what we're doing here is, uh, is, is trying to bring everybody on board toward a common future for open. And, uh, and in doing that, we can realize the full potential of open. That's it. Thanks a lot.